I have made my way to beautiful Cusco, Peru for eight days of shuttle guided, fantastic mountain biking ahead of us. Another international adventure that has already started off on a little bit of a bad note. I flew SFO to Atlanta, to Lima, to Cusco, and during the SFO Atlanta switchover, the connection was very short. I made it on the flight. My bags did not make it on the flight. So hard to sleep on the plane. Got about eight seconds of sleep. I did a little bit of a nap, so I'm feeling pretty good. Luckily, the time change is only three hours ahead. It's basically Eastern Standard Time here in Peru, so that's gonna save me pretty good. Feeling good. I've already had a couple really good meals. I had a burger at Jack's, which is right down the street from our hotel. Bueno. Everyone else on the trip is getting their bikes built up right now, and it looks like my bags will arrive tomorrow at 6.20 a.m. I've got nothing. I've got this and a jacket and a, a fresh pair of socks that I brought. No toothbrush, no deodorant. <laughs> I flew with Delta, and the Delta app is pretty good with the lost baggage or the missed baggage or the delayed baggage, and I can actually see where it is and where it's going. We are near the equator here, but Cusco is at 11,000 feet, so we're gonna have a lot of altitude adjustment, a lot of adapting. The surrounding mountains are ginormous. Everywhere you look, there's massive mountains that probably go up to 15,000 feet and stuff, and that's what we're gonna go ride. I finally made it to South America, my sixth continent on this channel. I've taken you guys all over the world, and I'm so excited to see what the riding is gonna be like. And we are not just going to get some bucket list once in a lifetime riding in on this trip. We are also going to get some bucket list once in a lifetime touristing <laughs> at Machu Picchu. It's just an amazing site. I've only seen photos. I've heard great things about it. And due to the recent civil unrest, uh, there's not many tourists around right now. <laughs> so normally Machu Picchu gets 5,000 people a day. There's been like less than 200 people a day during the recent uh, problems they've had. So, hey, works for us. The US State Department says Cusco is at a level four do not travel. Much like uh, Ukraine, Russia, Afghanistan, Iraq, there's no level five. I'm a pretty practical person and also a pretty paranoid person about personal safety and all that kind of stuff. But you gotta live your life. You gotta get out there. You can't just let another excuse stop you from doing something you've always wanted to do. Like pet a real life alpaca. Bucket list. The cars and the people mixing together is a level four travel advisory in and of itself. Hardest thing about Peru so far, don't put toilet paper in the toilet. Haven't they heard of bidets? So today's adventure brings us back to the Cusco airport where my luggage was supposed to be on this flight. Doesn't look like it's on this flight. Well, I had a really nice luggage lady helping me out. We'll see if my bags get here tomorrow. Oh man, the Delta app said, oh yeah, we saw that you missed your connection and we're gonna get your luggage, it's all good. It wasn't. Okay, back to the accommodation now. The sun is shining. I've got some uh, scavenged <laughs> bike gear. They found a bike for me. So actually, I think I'm gonna be able to ride today, which is really, really cool. It feels so good to take a shower and get a fresh, clean set of clothes. The simple things in life. This is actually Matt Yaki's stuff. He's the leader of the trip from Wandering Wheels. I'm doing pretty good. I'm gonna need a belt though. I think I know Matt pretty well because I did his Wandering Wheels Revelstoke trip. Amazing. We actually were in Tibet together on that trip. Memories for a lifetime. But I don't think you can truly know a man until you ride 20 miles in his chamois. Now this is what I needed most. So far, Peru has been fantastic with the English speakers. It's such an ugly American thing, but it's just so nice that so many people speak English and it's touristy. And then the deals, everything's been very, very reasonable. This is like $1.50 US. Our dinner last night was like fine dining, really, really nice. I got the Lomo Saltado and it was about 12 bucks US. Just really nice. I'm such a cheapskate. <laughs> Pay all this money for the flights and the trip and everything, but 
just to come here and have deals is it's pretty cool. We all know there's still some fine dining deals to be had if you cook your meals at home. And we all know the best way to eat at home is with today's fine sponsor, ButcherBox. Don't go to the store. Save your time, save your gas money, avoid the crowds, and you can still get restaurant quality, grass-fed, grass-finished beef, wild-caught seafood, free-range chicken, all from ButcherBox, shipped free if you use my link in the description. So here's how it works. ButcherBox only sources their meat from farmers and fishermen who hit the highest standards for quality. You choose your box and delivery frequency to fit your family's needs. ButcherBox ships your order frozen at peak freshness and packed in an eco-friendly 100% recyclable box. And then you enjoy the high quality meat delivered to your door and you get more time to spend with your family over amazing meals. I really like going with the custom box so I can shake things up every month and try different things, but there's still two things in every box that I have to have, the wild Alaskan sockeye salmon and the filet mignon. The filet mignon is so easy on the grill, six minutes each side, 400 degrees, put some Montreal steak seasoning on there, perfect. And then the wild Alaskan salmon is one of Sarah's masterpiece meals. She always does this maple syrup based sauce on it and it's just too good. We tried the ground turkey this time around and we used my dad's turkey chili recipe that was absolutely fantastic and is still good day after day after day as leftovers. I also gave the breakfast sausage a try. So much better than the terrible microwaved rubbery sausage stuff I eat every morning. Click the link below to check out the latest and greatest limited time offer. ButcherBox always does something special for their members. Last month they threw a turkey in my box for free. <laughs> Plus, you will get free shipping if you use my link below. Thanks again to ButcherBox for sponsoring this trip, making these videos possible, keeping BKXC alive. This trip is called Sacred Valley DH, and it's advertised as 95% downhill. So we had an awesome shuttle driver the whole week, Senor Braulio, making it easy on us to get lap after lap after lap. We got things started off right with some fantastic trails just above the city of Cusco, not far from our hotel at all. Up above 12,000 feet, and we've got a one minute climb that's gonna kill me. So just an FYI, this is not how I like my videos to look, it's not how I like my videos to sound, but it's the best I could do with the equipment I was able to scavenge out from my buddies. So thankful that Matt was able to get a bike together, clothing. I borrowed shoes and pedals from Ryan. Whew. No more talking. Oh yeah, and this GoPro is from my buddy Patrick. Oh yeah, wheels on the ground in Peru. Ooh yeah. <laughs> so weird riding a different bike. Oh, look at this. In the countryside. Oh man, that is awesome. Creek out, yeah. <laughs> He didn't like the look of me. Woo! Yeah!
This is our local guide, Kinti, up ahead. He is a fantastic writer and also a fantastic tour guide. Translated a bunch of stuff, taught us so much about the local culture. I can't wait to share all these little fun things with you guys. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> Picky, picky. Trail work. <laughs> Into the ditch. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey. Treacherous. Whoa! That was really goofy, but good. Not, wasn't that steep, but it just looked like a roller coaster. Right! Independent steering, front wheel and rear. Intensivo. Huh? Intenso. Huh? <laughs> Intenso. Intenso. Okay. Uh. Today's lunch stop was a popular cevicheria and Matt wanted to make sure we got the typical local meal, which starts out with some leche de tigre. Whoever milked that tiger was a brave soul, had a little kick to it. And uh, that's about as daring as I got on the whole trip. I came to regret it a little bit later. Oh yeah. Second part was a soup, and then for the big meal, we all had the typical dish with fried fish, rice, and ceviche.
The dirt's getting tacky as we speak. Oh, I'm still getting stuff in my eye even though I got my glasses on. Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> hey, good job, dude. Yeah, that's super good. What the hell? After the ride, we got out of the rain and had some really fun playtime with a few llamas and alpacas at a place called Manos de la Comunidad, aka Hands of the Community. They had a bunch of really good handmade stuff, but it's only the second day, so none of us were really ready to start grabbing all of our Peruvian souvenirs. But I did have to grab all the toilet paper I thought I would need before I went into the toilet. Have you ever had to do that? Had a nice warm shower and now I'm back in my same clothes. Once again, the luggage saga continues. This morning I saw that my bike bag made it to the Lima airport because I have an Apple AirTag on there. I was kind of looking and it was the first time it actually showed up in a couple days. But that was the last time it showed up, around 9 a.m. this morning. No heartbeat over the past 10 hours or so. So who knows where it is. So my other luggage, everything that's not my bike bag, took a trip to Brazil today. I was in the Delta Track Your Bag app and I'm like, what airport is GRU? It's the airport outside of Sao Paulo. So now my Patagonia bag has been to a country that I haven't been to. Okay, I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to go on a mini shopping spree because I believe that Delta is required to reimburse you for purchases made when they've lost your luggage. I know, good luck, but uh, I'm gonna, gonna roll the dice on that. So I went to this place called Tattoo, which has some outdoorsy clothing. They rent mountain bikes, but they didn't have much in the way of mountain bike clothing specifically, but I did get a pair of like active pants, a, a jersey type thing, some underwear, and an expensive rain jacket. So we're hoping for the payback from Delta. Then I went over to this place called Topi Top, which is kind of like H&M. It's all made in Peru stuff, but it's still very reasonably priced. Got some shirts, got some fresh socks, fresh underwear. Oh, what a world of difference. Also got a sweatshirt and some sweatpants because it was a little cold in here last night. And apparently the sweatpants were two for one because uh, when the lady was ringing me up, she sent someone else to go get another pair. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot the most important thing, the deodorant. The thing I really need is the nose hair trimmer. Things are gonna start getting serious here. I gotta start talking like this. We finished out the day with another ridiculously good meal for a ridiculously reasonable price at Uchu. They serve meat on these crazy hot volcanic slabs. I got a mix of alpaca, beef, and pork, and it cooks right up in front of you. I did not leave room for dessert, but everything everyone else got looked stupendous. This is just the first adventure from Peru. I've got many, many more videos on the way. You're gonna wanna hit the notification bell so you can be the first to find out when or if I ever get my bike back. Your support of this channel is what keeps me traveling. The easiest way to support is to hit the like button right here, right now. It actually matters for some reason. Or you can support the sponsors that support me. Check out the link to ButcherBox in the description. I could not have made this trip happen without sponsors like ButcherBox. And if you want to directly support this channel and get ahead of the pack on YouTube, you can sign up for the Patreon. For three bucks a month, you get these videos early and extended. I've got an archive going back seven years of 45 minute plus extended cuts that are awesome to watch while you're on your indoor cycling trainer getting ready for the summer while it's still winter. 
Or you could head over to bkxc.store, pick up a sticker pack, a t-shirt, or a sweatshirt. Every little bit helps to keep these videos coming, to keep me traveling. I'm forever grateful for your support. Thanks for watching, you guys. I'll see you on the trail.